to your health. <laughs> Welcome to Drunken Birmingham Music History. I'm <laughs> Terry Lewis. I'm the first interviewee for. Yeah. The first interviewee. I got a story about something true that happened to me in Birmingham. This is July 17, 2014. I parted with Sting of the police. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know who I was with. I, got a, <laughs> I did not know who I was with. I had a cab run, basic cab run, called me to come pick up somebody from the uh, black market colonnade. Pull up, this guy got out, yellow as hair, you know, blondish hair, white beater t shirt, uh, short khakis, and flip flop. He get in in a very pronounced British accent. He said, uh, take me to the courtyard 280. I said, okay. So we're on the way there. He said, tell me something, cab driver. Give me some wisdom. Tell me something good. I said, well, the only thing I got for you is mind your own business and be honest as you can and stuff and mind your own business and leave people the hell alone. He said, that's some wisdom. He said, I own a small island in Nags Head, North Carolina. Immediately, I started thinking, this is a loop loop. This is a, he's not well mentally. Yeah. Okay, I think I just got me a, a escape mental patient. Yeah, you got a, a, a small island in Nags Head, North Carolina. Fine. I'm circling my head while I'm thinking. So I get to the place and let him off cut the meat off. He said, come inside with me, cab, and have a drink. I said, sir, I don't drink on duty. I'm on duty. He promptly handed me a hundred dollar bill in my hand. And I cut the meter off. <laughs> I said, I guess I will go in and have a drink with him. So we go in and order a drink. I order a margarita. I'm not, not a heavy drinker. Just for anybody who out there, this is all proper state. I'm not a heavy drinker. I, I choose cannabis nine times out of ten over Amen. alcohol, wine, and beer. So let that know. I'm not a heavy drinker. I, I don't I don't process it. But, but we sat down at the table. I ordered a margarita. And people kept walking past our table looking at us at the table. Six or seven times I see the same female pass by six or seven times staring. I finally look at him. I said, what is he, she looking at me like that for? <laughs> I didn't know. So finally she got the nerve up and she came over and whispered in my ear. She asked me, is that Sting you're with? I looked at him. I looked at her. I said, no. <laughs> and then, I start, then it started my mind to roll. I said, British accent, Nags Head, North Carolina. Probably not, but I'm going to go check. I went to the jukebox and pulled up some old police album. Sure enough, the guy that was on the album cover looked like the guy I was with, but I was still unsure. This is 40, you know, 30 years later. You know, this is yeah. 80s photo. This is in the 2017. So I went back to the table. I said, are you staying with the police? He dropped his hand and said, I said, man, why the hell he didn't tell me <laughs> you were staying with the police, man? Y'all were my favorite group, right on Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Prince. Sting them was right up in there. She said, when I go to town and stuff, I like to hang out with people, the common people, the bartenders, the waitresses, the cab driver. I, I'd much rather hang out with people like y'all than the Hollywood elite, the connected and stuff. They so plastic. They so, and, and I like yeah. to hang out. So I was shocked. I'm sitting up here saying, I'm sitting up here partying with Sting or the police and didn't know it. Finally, I, you know, when we got through, I, I got drunk. He didn't get drunk. I got drunk. I, <laughs> yeah. I just kept downing margaritas and stuff. I'm in the camp. So I said, man, I'm in a band. I'm in a band, POTUS and stuff. Could you, I'd like to go let you meet my drummer, my drummer, Todd Kelly. He said, fine. So we get in the car and we drive all the way to Avondale where Todd was living. It was just at the daybreak when we was getting there. I knocked on the door. Todd opened up the little peephole and looked at her. She said, Terry, what the hell are you doing here at 5 o'clock in the morning? I said, I said, I got Sting. I got Sting of the police with me. want to come in and meet you. He slammed the door and locked the door. He told me, don't, don't ever come to my house with a stranger at 5 o'clock in the morning. Don't ever do that. So I got back in the cab and I left it. I took him to the Hilton. It wasn't the Hilton at the time, but it was the other name before it got to Hilton. Yeah. And I dropped him off. He still owed me something like $180 on the meter. Because I left the meter home while we were doing this. So he got out and stuff, and I blacked out on, I blacked out at the wheel. <laughs> the, the next morning, the, the, the concierge, the Mater D, came and knocked on my window. He said, sir, do you see your tire up on the, up on the sidewalk and the other three tires down? I looked, I said, damn. Then I looked at this door, and I had vomited up all on the side of my door frame. <laughs> the window was covered with vomit. And the door friend, I said, damn. I said, I'm so glad you ain't the police and stuff. <laughs> They're waking me up. But I woke up and I never got in contact with him, never got my money. Sting, you owe me $180, brother. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'll be glad to get that anytime you ready. <laughs> Rock on. Okay. <laughs>